Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and congregations of the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate from your surrounding area. On today's program... Maybe we shouldn't say that seeing is believing, but rather that hearing is believing. Through the eyewitness testimony of the apostles, we have confidence that Jesus has destroyed death, that he is risen from the dead, and that he gives eternal life to all who believe in his name. And that is no myth. The service will begin after this opening hymn. Good morning. I'm Vicar Benjamin Wessel from Zion Lutheran Church in Mitchell. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion 
in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The first reading is written in Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them, and brought the proceeds of what was sold, and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is written in 1 John chapter 1 and 2, beginning with 1 verse 1 and going through 2 verse 2. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest and we have seen it, and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father, and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things, so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him, and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel is according to St. John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for my message today is from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. People always say that seeing is believing, and at first it seems like Thomas thinks that too. A lot of the time, we think of Thomas as a skeptic who refuses to believe anything unless he has solid proof. In fact, not only does Thomas say that he won't believe unless he sees, he goes farther and says that he needs to touch Jesus before he believes that he's risen from the dead. And so we give him the nickname Doubting Thomas and criticize him because he didn't believe the other disciples. But when we take another look at the gospel for today, we find that that's not the whole story. And especially when we look at the story of Thomas in the light of our epistle reading from today, we see that doubting Thomas is not the whole picture. When we first meet the disciples in today's reading, we find them huddled behind locked doors on Easter evening. They're afraid because as far as they know, evil has won the day. Jesus is dead and all is lost. But little did they know that they would become eyewitnesses of Jesus' resurrection. Jesus comes and stands among them and says to them, Peace be with you. But when we look at Luke's account of the same event in Luke chapter 24, the disciples are frightened when Jesus comes and appears to them. They think that he's a ghost, a spirit, an illusion. But Jesus shows them his hands and his feet that were pierced by the nails when he was crucified. John also mentions that he shows them his side, which was pierced by a spear when the Romans wanted to make sure that he was dead. And just to eliminate any doubt that he was an illusion or a figment of their imagination, Luke tells us that he ate some fish in order to prove that he really had bodily risen from the dead. Going back to John chapter 20, it's when the disciples realized that Jesus actually has risen from the dead, that he's not an illusion, that he is there in his body, that they overcome their fear and are glad at Jesus' message, peace be with you. And it's then that they go from being the twelve disciples to being the twelve apostles. A disciple is a student, someone who's learning from a teacher, but an apostle is a messenger, someone sent to proclaim a message. It's only when the disciples become eyewitnesses of Jesus' bodily resurrection from the dead that they become apostles. It's only then that Jesus sends them out to proclaim the forgiveness of sins. Once Jesus has shown them his hands and his side, he says to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. That's why in our epistle reading from today, John emphasizes that he is an eyewitness of Jesus' resurrection. He emphasizes that which we have heard, that which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and have touched with our hands. That's what it means to be an apostle. It means to be an eyewitness of Jesus after he rose from the dead. It means to be someone who saw and heard and touched Jesus' risen body and to proclaim the good news of the resurrection to others. That's what John says in 1 John 1 verse 3, that which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And so Thomas isn't all wrong to want to see Jesus. He's not all wrong to want to see in his hands the mark of the nails and to place his finger into the mark of the nails and his hand into Jesus' side. Yes, he should have believed his fellow disciples when they told him they'd seen Jesus, but he wasn't wrong to want what they had. It wasn't wrong for him to want to be an eyewitness, because being an eyewitness is part of what it means to be an apostle. And so Jesus gives him what he asked for. A week later, he appears to all the disciples, including Thomas, and lets Thomas get the eyewitness experience that he wants. And when Thomas gets this eyewitness experience, he recognizes Jesus for who he is. He says, my Lord and my God, because Jesus' resurrection is the greatest proof that what Jesus said about himself was true. Jesus' resurrection is the greatest proof that he is the Son of God. 
Now, unlike Thomas and the other apostles, we have not seen Jesus risen from the dead. We are not eyewitnesses of the resurrection, but Jesus gives a blessing to those who have not seen yet have believed. Even though we haven't seen the risen Jesus, we believe in him on the basis of the testimony from the apostles. Even though we can't see Jesus or touch his body or see his hands and his side, we do have the eyewitness testimony of the people who did see, touch, and feel Jesus after he rose from the dead. That's the purpose of the New Testament, to preserve for all time the eyewitness testimony of the apostles. That's what John says about why he wrote his book. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Christianity is different from all other religions in this way. Christianity is the only religion whose core belief is based on eyewitness testimony. Christianity is the only religion whose central teaching is based on the eyewitness testimony of multiple different people, including skeptics, who wrote down what they heard, saw, and touched. Jesus' resurrection wasn't just a hallucination by the apostles, nor was it a lie made up by the early church. If it was a lie, if it was a myth, then why did skeptics such as Thomas, Paul, or Jesus' own brother James see something that they didn't believe in? If it was made up by the disciples, why did all but one of the twelve apostles die for something that they knew was not true? For example, we know from history that Doubting Thomas went on to be a missionary in the East, eventually making his way to India, where he was martyred for being a Christian, and where there are still churches to this day who claim him as their founder. People will die for a lie if they believe it is true, but they will not die for a lie if they know that it's not true. Altogether, the eyewitness testimony of the apostles, preserved for us in the writings of the New Testament, give us a strong foundation upon which we can build our faith. And so maybe we should amend the old saying. Maybe we shouldn't say that seeing is believing, but rather that hearing is believing. Through the eyewitness testimony of the apostles, we have confidence that Jesus has destroyed death, that he is risen from the dead, and that he gives eternal life to all who believe in his name. And that is no myth. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray the prayer Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.
Thank you for viewing Main Street Living this morning. Our hope is that you have been blessed and encouraged by hearing God's Word. If you are able to attend local services, I would invite you to worship with our congregation. If you are in the Mitchell area, please join us at Zion Lutheran Church Sunday mornings at 8 o'clock or 1030. This broadcast is supported by viewers like you, and their financial help allows this broadcast to continue. You can join us by sending a contribution of any amount to this address. More information about this program can be found at MainStreetLiving.com, including links to other LCMS websites, congregation locations, and additional ways to donate. Thank you again for joining us today, and have a blessed week in the Lord. We hope to see you again at the same time next Sunday on this station.